Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jung Woo Ha from Labor Labs Korea. And I'll talk about uh, successful application of deep learning to large scale item categorization. Yeah. My presentation consists of this content. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I introduced my company neighbor in brief before the presentation because I found that many people here are unfamiliar to my company in my first time. So uh, neighbor, uh, not, not neighbor, please be careful when pronouncing it, yes, okay? Uh, neighbor is the number one internet company of Korea and it started from a web search engine in the middle of the 1990s and now it covers web horror, global messenger, various, various content including news, music, blog, podcast, video, collective intelligence, advertisement, and so on. Now, uh, MAU of our messenger is over 250 million and daily mobile page views, which is 1.6 million. Okay? And Naval Apps is the R&D center for advanced technology of Naval. And uh, uh, our research includes uh, machine learning, AI, recommendation, speech recognition, uh, computer vision, machine translation, uh, robotics, etc. Okay. I think categorization is a very important issue in the e-commerce industry. The item category decides the web page or layout where it is displayed in the e-commerce site. When a user searches items, they input item categories as a query in most cases. If a user finds some items external to the query in the search list, then the user is likely to be unsatisfied. Therefore, we can imagine that precise item categorization have a large influence on the revenue of e-commerce companies. Oh, I can see that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. So, for precise item categorization, many companies used to employ human experts, but this manual categorization by humans requires a heavy operational cost because many sellers register a large number of new items in the website every day. Therefore, automatic item categorization methods have been studied for over a decade. In the perspective of machine learning, item categorization can be considered as a classification problem with the large class label set size from the meta information of an item. However, item categorization is challenging due to some reasons. First, the data given by seller are insufficient and very noisy. In fact, feeding item information in a website is quite a tiresome task for sellers. Therefore, for explaining and promoting their items, they in general use an image containing all textual information as well as item photos like two figures. In many cases, the textual ex explanation occupies the image more rather than its product, product photo. Second is an extreme case. Uh, let's assume that an item title is just foreign direct purchase, sub-ten in general. I'll do my best. Okay, what is the item category? Yeah. The answer is one piece for women. Okay. It is very difficult to categorize this item to one piece because all sellers say, I'll do my best, and this has little information on item, right? 
But we should do that because we should operate our e-commerce company, right? Third, uh, the category hierarchies and terms are not consistent between our companies and sellers. Okay. And last, the category data distribution has a long tail like the left figure. We can see that a few lead categories contain lots of items, over a hundred thousand items in the red box, while many lead categories have a small number of items in the blue boxes. There are just more than several hundreds of leaf categories with less than 10 items. Okay. This long tail item distribution makes the problem to be difficult for machine learning. Okay. So, many methods using diverse approaches have been proposed for item categorization. Although they show the successful applications, but uh, they still have some issues such as the requirement of additional information like category taxonomies, and noisy images, and metadata, as mentioned, and data sparsity due to high dimensional feature representation when using back of words method. Mm. So our contribution is to categorize the items while avoiding data sparsity without any category taxonomy or hierarchy information. For item categorization, we use six attributes of metadata, which are mandatory options for sellers to register items into our system. The attributes contain item name, brand name, high level category by seller, seller's ID, manufacturer, image signatures. Yeah. As shown in the table, the values of each attribute are represented with a word sequence or a symbol. Okay. Leaf category data are labeled by human experts and uh, accumulated for e-commerce service of our company for a long time. Therefore, we can use the leaf categories as the ground truth data. Okay. We propose a deep learning method for item categorization, DeepCN. DeepCN consists of multiple recurrent neural networks for word sequence embedding and some fully connected networks for classification. The main idea is an attribute dedication approach. Each RNN is dedicated to each attribute, for example, item title RNN, manufacturer RNN, brand RNN, and so on. Okay. Then, when we use six attributes, uh, then DeepCN contains six separated RNNs. Let's assume that we use two attributes, item name and brand name. Then, as shown in this figure, when the item name is a fantastic ratio guard, and the brand name is South Pacific, then our model categorizes the item to swimwear. This is the deep sea structure. When I, um, item metadata are given, the word sequence of each attribute is given to its own RNN as an input. And after the end of the sequence, we obtain the output values of the RNNs and then we concatenate them into a real value vector. After that, we can cal calculate the probability of the item category using the softmax function from the concatenated vectors. Okay, this is the typical formulations of uh, multiple recurrent layers and fully connected layers and the softmax function. Okay. Okay. The learning of DeepCN is conducted in an end-to-end -end way. We define the cost function as the summation of the squared errors, and it means the occurring error gradients are propagated through the all the fully connected and recurrent layers to update their weight by the weight propagation and the BPTT, BPTT method. Okay. 
We evaluated the DeepCN on 95 million items with over 4,000 leaf categories. The user data set is a part of items registered in label shopping. Uh, and the vocabulary size means that the number of the used unique words is over 2.5 million. The details of the item, uh, the data are presented in this table. So we can observe that the data are skewed with respect to high level category. We use the high level category for the convenience of table presentation and result summary only. Okay? We do not run the high level category for running. Okay? And the task is to classify that high level category but leaf category. Okay? The number of leaf categories is the same as the output node size of Dipsian. And we compare our model with two baseline methods. Uh, DeepCN 6R is the proposed DeepCN using all the six attributes. And one of the baseline models is on major networks using bag of words based okay, for verifying the effects of sequence modeling and neural network based low dimensional embedded representation. The other is DeepCN using only one RNN in this case. The, the input is a long wall sequence where all attribute words are concatenated. Okay. By comparing this CN6 star to this CN1R, we can find the, the effect on our dedication approach. Okay, due to legal issue, we define a relative accuracy. And relative accuracy means the ratio of each accuracy to total accuracy of this CN6R. And the, the table shows the the accuracy of three models with respect to each high level category. DCN6R is the best accuracy comparing two models, so it did indicates that our dedication approach improve, improves the accuracy of few, although the difference, difference is about 20.6%, but DCN6R correctly categorizes much more items than DCN1R due to the data size as a 200 of thousand items. Okay? And yeah. this is based on all the human labels? Human labels from yeah. all 94 million? Yeah, labels. right, right. Yeah. Very, very, for a very long time, we accumulated the data for our service. Okay? So, also, we can find that the embedded representation and the sequence modeling dramatically improves the, the accuracy. Okay. Furthermore, it, it is natural that machine learning goods show relatively low accuracy compared to other high level categories because they contain very diverse items. Okay. Left figure shows a running curve, and the right figure presents the three dimensional PC plus of the concatenated RNA of vectors of three high level categories. So this indicates that the embedded representation has category specific discriminative ability by the supervised learning. Uh, from these two figures, we find that our method can provide good accuracy on several long tail categories from the red box, of course. From the right figure, we can find the, that our method shows good Category share performance on item categories containing many items in general. Right. These figures present the effects of hidden node size. Uh, more nodes show better accuracy, but the performance is saturated for enough large values. And it is well known that too many nodes require more learning time and may cause to weaken the generalization performance of the model. Okay. This figure presents the effects of the number of hidden layers. Um, from these figures, we can, fi we can find that recurrent layers have more influence than the performance with respect to accuracy and time. Okay. Last, last uh, the result. This table represents the effect of unused attributes. The second column is the case we accept the image. And third is case to accept image and seller's ID. It is reasonable that seller's ID is an important attribute for categorizing tax-free goods. Cause, because tax-free goods category can contain all kinds of items. 
they are decided by not which category is the item included, but who the seller is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we propose the deep learning based item categorization method, DeepCN. Then our method uses a dedication approach and RN based embedding method. This allows our model to enhance the categorization accuracy compared to the baseline method. Uh, we, found and we found that the recurrent layers are important to pull the performance. Thank you. Hi, uh, great talk, it was very enlightening. One question I had for you was, I noticed that you didn't use price as a feature. Was it because that you were not given price as a, in the data set, or it was not helpful? Yeah, but we didn't, we didn't use the, the price information, just that, I, that we used the six attributes only. Okay, and then so if you were given the price, how would you incorporate that into this uh, model? Mm, in this case, uh, just uh, the DTC is uh, the imp using the neural network, so we can use just a uh, kind of uh, feed for the neural network style and we can merge it uh, to this other parts and the price feature part, uh, we can merge it or concatenate the style or other, other representation can be used, can be implemented using the neural style, neural network style, I think. Yeah. Sorry, didn't quite follow that. Uh, yeah. The, do you mean the price feature can be used in this model, right? Yeah. How, yeah. how would you? Do yeah. That? yeah. So we uh, we did not the price feature, but uh, if we use the price feature, then we can use a, a kind of uh, the neural network style. Uh, the, the value, the price value are uh, discretized the several steps of node or just this, uh, another, the, uh, similar to another symbols, uh, we can just uh, vocabulary, just uh, the price is, price is considered as a word or a symbol. So the- I, I think the question uh, is yeah. why didn't you use price? Ah, uh, yeah. The really- Basically. Oh, well, I think he answered that question first, which was yeah. he said he did not have it in the data mm. set. But then the question was then, if you did have it, how would you model it? Because yeah. it's a numerical value as opposed to the other data, which is more of a uh, text data. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, you should be able to normalize it and then just feed yeah, it directly yeah, into, a, yeah. into one of the nodes. Yeah, of course, guess, so. numerical data requires some normalize, uh, normalizing the process. And uh, uh, actually, we, uh, the goal is uh, to to solve this problem using just the texture or symbolic data, we, uh, how the, the, whether it can the categorize the, the items we want to see. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, question back there. Hi. Did you try any methods for trying to handle explicitly the unbalanced data, like doing subsampling or some other methods, or compare what you did with the uh, uh, deep nets, or uh, I'm sorry. Did you um, did you do anything to uh, because of the skew in the data? Did you like overweight or subsample in order to? Yeah, yeah, we did not. Did we did not cause the the this model should be deployed in the service department. So the of course the the subsampling or downsampling can be uh, improved the accuracy, but in this case the. In service time, the real accuracy can and is likely to uh, decrease it. Per, right. per so downside. your objective yeah. truly was that that global right. optimi op op mean mm. squared error yeah. reduction. So, yeah. so. Um, I had a, a more question about deployment. Um, yeah. So you built this um, when you provided it to to the team. I mean, how how do they respond? Are they using it? Are they? Um, is this happening automatically or? Because I, I assume before it was completely manual, right? Um, I'm sorry, the, 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 please, please explain to you. So you, uh, before you built the system, I presume you had a team of folks that, that get a new item and they'd have to go through the categories and manually yeah. put it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you have an automated system. Yeah, yeah, um, yes. Is it now fully automatic or is it used to guide the team? Or I mean, how is it being applied, I guess? Uh, we, we deployed the, our library 
the implemented, implemented library to service development, and uh, they, they the, to do the, the work, the task sh which sh they, to, they should do is the pre-processing, is uh, pre-processing, -pre pre-processing contains some, the, the each word, for each word, the same word index, okay, and uh, Check the out of vocabulary word and and some um, the stemming the stemming the word the word base word count okay then we c the, they can use the, this our model in to imp uh, input the, their data and then our library can categorize the item right but so it spits out categories right yeah do they just uh, trust it and drop it in there or do they vet it I'm just curious. I, you know, I work in industry, yeah. so I'm wondering <laughs> yeah. how to roll these things out. So. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I don't, actually, the, the, I don't know exactly, but cause uh, the, how the, how the, 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 the service part department can use this uh, very uh, in detail, I, I don't know, but. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, fair yeah. enough. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.